All right, here we go with Vex VR using Python. Uh, it was just released yesterday, and I am super excited to show you guys how you can use Python to make even more powerful programs in Vex VR. Let's get to it. All right, here we are on the VEX VR uh, website. You can see that if uh, there's some additional options here that we haven't seen in the past, uh, specifically this little button right here that is the uh, open and closing, you know, little brackets, uh, which I think is funny because you don't really use those in Python. I don't, I don't think. Uh, less than or greater than, I guess. But anyway, uh, so what I wanna show you in this video is really just show you around a little bit and show you how you can use uh, Python. Uh, so this is just an introductory video uh, about how you can use Python in VR. And uh, this will be kind of a, a Vex VR series part two. If, uh, if this is you know a little too much for you, don't worry, that's okay. Uh, you can continue to use Vex VR with blocks only. Um, please look in the description below to see the series on Vex VR using blocks only. Uh, so in this series, I'm going to go over how to accomplish a lot of the tasks using Python, uh, which will allow us to actually do quite a bit more. Uh, one of the videos in the previous series that I did, I had said I would do a part two um, if I could. At the time, I didn't feel like there was enough flexibility in blocks to do that video, but I'm happy to report that after uh, thinking about it and looking at uh, what you can do in Python uh, in Vex VR, I think we can do it. Okay, so I'm talking about the dynamic maze. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to program that so that it records its waypoints so that it can come back to the beginning uh, in the most efficient route. So that should be pretty exciting. All right, let's take a look at our uh, program. Let's just do the very, very, very first thing where we just say drop a uh, drive forward command into uh, the working area. Now you can click, you know, start and uh, we can see the playground pop up. I just got the grid map here and there you go. I just drove forward for 200 millimeters. Easy, right? Well, by now you should have, if you're on this video, you probably have already tried Vex VR. So if you haven't, uh, give it a shot, see how it goes. But now we can click on this little guy up here. It's next to the monitor and the help button. And that will show us our code. Uh, and so I always do that. Okay. So we've got right here, it always sets a variable uh, and it sets to zero. Then it, then it uh, puts it as a global variable within our uh, function here that it's going to run in this thread. Okay. So we get to look at this and say, hey, we're gonna have multiple, we can have multiple functions, we can have multiple uh, threads running. Uh, and you can see that this is a, the, the object-oriented language of Python right here. And they've made the, uh, the uh, you know, commands, they've made the code pretty easy to read. All right, so now because I slipped up there for a minute, uh, disclaimer, I am not a coder. I don't uh, program in Python. Uh, I know the basics of coding, very basics of coding. Uh, things like, um, you know, algorithmic thinking, things like, uh, you know, functions and arrays. And I know a lot of the terminology, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna be working through this with you and just showing you some of the things that I figured out and um, just show you why I think this is so exciting, okay? So right here, you got drive, uh, drivetrain dot drive underscore four forward comma 200 millimeters. All right. So it's fairly easy to figure out. You'll notice if you've done any C-based programming or any other languages, really, uh, that sometimes these lines have semicolons at the end. Python, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you, you sometimes will see that there, uh, this would be like in an enclosed uh, like curly braces. Again, you don't have to worry about that. It has to do with spacing. All right, the fact that this is indented, it knows that it's part of a uh, when started one. So we're cool there. All right, once you have done this, uh, you can, you know, you can add like a, let's say a turn, you can leave that code block open. So we say turn right for 90 and watch what happens to the code. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let go and drop that block in. Boom, it adds it right away. And so you can create a whole program using blocks and then look at the code in Python and go, man, I wish I could have modified uh, the array to have, 
you know, more, um, uh, more values, more rows and more columns. And in the, the block side, you can't really go in there and edit that. In the code side, you can. Uh, but here's the caveat, right? Here's the, here's the, uh, the trade-off. Down here, where you probably can't see because I'm covering it up. There we go. There's a little button that says convert to text project. Now, once you go that, and once you go there, once you click that, you can't go back to the block project. So if you're about to click the uh, convert to text project, I would first click on file and then save to your device. All right, save your block project to your device. That way you can always get back to it if you need to. Um, so if you click convert to text, you have, see it's saying, do you wanna save it? You could click save. So you don't have to go up there first, I guess. I'm gonna say discard, boom. My little block area is gone. My blocks over here are gone. But I have these, uh, they're kind of like blocks in text and you can click and drag those over to the line right there and then boom. Now I've got that, I can click play. Click play. I'm gonna go forward for 200, turn 90 and then go forward for 200. And there we go. Perfect, right? Uh, I, I don't have some of the functionality, like I don't get, I don't see that it's stepping through the code. Uh, that step button uh, disappears, so I can't step through my code that way. Um, if you get a syntax error or something where you've, you've done something a little weird, um, let's say I forgot like this parenthesis, and you push start, you're gonna get a, well, yeah. You're gonna get a run, it's a runtime error occurred and click okay. The monitor is gonna pop open and show you the console down here. And it's gonna show you like, for instance, unexpected EOF while parsing. So some of this uh, terminology is it's not quite uh, real um, beginner friendly, but that's okay. That, that's why you, know, you have blocks and this is learning. So let's say this happened and you're like, ah, oh, crud, my program, and you can't figure out what is wrong. Well, go back to your blocks, you know, load from device, and then convert to text again and kind of start over and play around, okay? Uh, so I can see here it's telling me it's on line nine. I can go to line nine and look at that and if I can see like, oh, I can see it, it's because I'm missing that closing parenthesis there. And then click start and I shouldn't get a, an error this time and I don't, so there we go. All right, guys, I really hope that you are excited about Python the way that I am. I am going to be putting out more videos on how to use Python uh, very soon, probably over the weekend. I'm expecting to drop uh, at least a couple videos. And so please subscribe, like, share with your friends, all of the good stuff, all right? And I'll see you in the next video.